Hello, yogis. Thank you for being here. My name is Alicia Finley. Today for this flow class, we are going to do a flow practice. I would love for you to have a block of which I am sitting on right now. You can also have a blanket or a um, strap if you need it. Any props that just make your practice uh, meet your needs is what you should go grab. As always, listen to your body. If anything I guide you toward doesn't feel good, please honor yourself. Listen to where you're at today. So those of you that have practiced with me for a while, you know I'm kind of obsessed with personal growth. I like it a lot. <laughs> well, dumb and dumb, I like it a lot. Um, and I came across a, a thought, a food for thought by Veronica Wild. And she was talking about personal growth. And she said, the most profound per personal growth does not happen when you are on the yoga mat or when you are meditating. It happens in the throes of conflict when you are angry, afraid, or frustrated. It happens when you are doing the same old thing and suddenly you realize you have a choice. And, you know, sometimes people will say, do you, do you use self-help or do you have shelf help? Because you read all these books and you take all this information in and then it just sits on the shelf and you don't do anything with it. So my mission is always, and I do it as quick as I can, I learn something, I apply it or use it or take it into action or teach it so that I'm really just starting to implement it as much as I can. Because I think that our whole time on this earth is really this journey of continuous evolution. It's a continuous transformation and uh, a becoming of sorts, right? We're constantly becoming. And, and then we go through these waves where we're very intense into our action. And then other times we're a little more into space of surrender. I'd love to hear where you are right now. Um, but just kind of notice even in the yoga practice, how things ebb and flow. And that even in any given moment, you might find yourself getting frustrated or overwhelmed. And then thoughts start coming in and I shouldn't be thinking. And just realizing that in that moment, you have a choice. And that's the awareness. That's the growth. So... You're sitting up nice and tall. Let your chin come down a little bit. Bring your hands to prayer at your heart. Take a deep breath in. Feel the low belly, the ribs, and the heart fill up. And open your mouth and let it go. Take a moment and set an intention. something that calls to you or a prayer. And a collective intention that may these practices help us see with new eyes and grow into the person that we are always meant to be, the highest form of ourselves. And let your chin fall towards your chest. Let your hands release down to your legs. Gently blink your eyes open. Good. Let's just start with a little bit of opening up the heart. So I want you to take your right fingertips back behind you. Reach your left arm up to the sky as you breathe in. I like to bend that back elbow just a hair. And then exhale, always coming back to you. Hands to prayer at the heart. Everything always starts with us. Left hand behind you. Inhale, reach up. First kind of teachings, life lessons of personal growth is to stop the blame. Right, stop the judgment. Le right hand behind you. Inhale. And just start to own it, to own your own life. Exhale. Left hand. Inhale. Reach. Exhale. As you push into this hand, if you wanted to lift your hips on this one, inhale. You certainly can. Exhale. And last time, left side, left hand down. Inhale, right arm up. Good. Exhale. Bring it all back down. Fingertips to the floor. Lean forward. Tuck your toes. Forward fold. Sway it out. You can take ragdoll if you prefer. Soften your breathing. You can move that block out of the way for now. Fingertips down. Inhale. Lift your heart. Exhale. Fold and bow. Reverse your arms. Inhale, rise. Come all the way up. And hands to prayer at your heart. Very good. Inhale, step the feet in just a little bit so they're about hip width apart. 
Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step your right leg back. Take your back knee down to the ground, untucking the toes. Inhale, Anjane Asana. Ardha Hanuman, exhale, straighten the front leg, airplane the arms and sweep them back. So you're having to work a little more with balance, heart moving forward, looking down. Inhale, back to Anjaneya Asana. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, straightening the front leg, Ardha Hanuman, bow the heart forward. One more time, breathe in. Push into the big toe mound. And then notice the shift to the heel as the toes lift and the heart evolves forward. Good. Now stay in the Ardha Hanuman. Take your right hand down. Turn your chest. Open it to the left. If you want to take the back arm and reach it up towards the sky, you can. Good. Take another breath. Breathe in. Good. Now top hand will come down as it does. The left leg will go back to tabletop. Left foot sweeps back. Let's take a couple of cat and cows. Inhale. Open up the heart. Exhale. Round the back. Pushing into the hands. Let the tailbone get heavy. Inhale. Upper inner thighs draw back. Take the shoulders. Release them away from your ears. Exhale. Round. Once more. Breathe in. Exhale, breathe out. This time, as you inhale and curl into cow, tuck your toes. Exhale, hips to the sky, downward facing dog. Now I can feel my stance is a little short, so let's come forward, plank pose. Walk your hands forward or your feet back. Get the alignment of the top of a push-up. Exhale, bend your knees so they hover. Now sit back like you're going towards child's pose, but you're Knees are still lifted. And then inhale, straighten the legs, hips to the sky, downward facing dog. So we'll repeat that a few times, like a wave, come forward, top of a push up plank. Exhale, bend the knees till they hover. Hips towards the heels, breathe in, lengthen the sides of your waist. You're still hovering, a lot of work here in the legs. Exhale, straighten the legs, hips to the sky. One more time, breathe in, heart forward. Exhale, bend the knees. Inhale, sitting hips towards heels. Knees are still lifted. Exhale, straighten the legs. Good, like a wave, come forward now, plank pose. Lower all the way to the belly. Fingertips go out wide in line with your shoulders. Untuck your toes and stretch one leg back at a time. Picking the leg up, stretching kind of the flesh of the front of the leg back behind you. And inhale, curling up. Now you can go a little here. You can go a lot. Maybe sway it out just a little bit side to side. Beautiful. And then exhale, slowly peel the upper body back down. Hands come back by your rib cage. Tuck your toes, and you're going to push up through tabletop, but you're going to go nice and slow to a count of five. So put the knees down, pull the belly button towards the back body, pushing up five, four, three, two, one, down dog. Exhale. Right leg reaches up. Inhale. Take the right leg to the sky, lifting the hamstrings up. Exhale. Right foot will step forward and through. Step that left foot a little bit over to the left, and then reaching right arm to the sky, world's greatest stretch, low lunge twist, right arm to the sky. Good. Now you're going to stay low. We're going to come to Skandasana. Weave your right arm in between that front hand and back leg, heels in, toes out, and then instead of going all the way down as low as you can go in your Skandasana, just reach your left arm over to the left. And then you'll cross that left arm back over, circling that right arm back up to the sky in this low lunge twist. Exhale, thread the arm, heels in, toes out. Take your left arm out to the left. As your heels go in, legs or toes point out, left leg's bent, right leg's straight. Good. So look a time or two if you need to. Inhale, low lunge twist. Exhale, thread, left arm reaches, left leg bends. Two more. Breathe in. Exhale. 
So once you've got it, I want you to more look down as you do skandhasana. You can look up as you do the low lunge twist. This is the last time. So that in particular, the skandhasana, your neck is long. Inhale, reach up, low lunge twist. Exhale, top hand down, push off that back leg and step it forward, everybody. Lengthen. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees here as much as you need to. And then reverse your swan dive. Inhale, rise, come all the way up. Hands to the heart. Exhale. All right, legs are feeling a little bit more awake. And so is my upper back. Here we go. Inhale, reach up, breathe in. How you doing? Exhale. <laughs> Inhale, lift. Our left leg goes back. Our back knee will go down as you untuck your toes. Anjaneyasana, inhale, reach the arms up. Ardha Hanuman, floating the arms back. And if you remembered, I want you to switch which hand is on top. Inhale, reach. Now, if you want, a little more challenge for the upper back is to keep the hands hovering off the low back. One more time, breathe in. Exhale. Good. Now, take left hand down to the floor. Right hand can stay on your right hip. You can move it over to the hip or reach the arm to the sky. So we've got this kind of Ardha Hanuman twist here. And you've got a block, so if you needed it, you could always put it underneath that bottom hand. Now keep leaning into that left hand because as your right foot sweeps back into tabletop, your right hand will come down. Good. This time I want you to turn your fingertips the other way so they point towards your knees. And if they don't go all the way, that's okay. Just go as far as they will go. Cat and cow this way. Breathe in. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, let's round the back. Whew, that feels good in the forearms. Inhale. Exhale. So even as we practice, recognizing that you have a choice in your practice. There will be moments maybe, inhale, where you're not doing everything I'm doing or exactly how I'm doing it. Exhale, round. Inhale, come forward and around. Slowly turn one hand around and the other hand around. Tuck your toes. Lift your knees. And let's take a downward facing dog. Hips to the sky. Plank pose. Breathe in. Now you start to know these movements. Exhale, bend the knees. They hover. Bear pose. I call this crouching down dog. So hips towards heels, your knees are still hovering. And inhale, downward facing dog. Two more of these. Inhale forward. Exhale, bear pose. Bend the knees. Inhale, crouching down dog. Find some space. Exhale, down dog. One more time. Inhale, come forward. Plank pose. Exhale, bear. Crouching down dog. Inhale. Inhale, downward facing dog. This time we'll come all the way forward to plank. Breathe in, all the way to the belly. One more time, fingertips out wide, stretch a leg back and then the other. Inhale, maybe you come up a little higher. You could also bring your hands in a little closer to you. All little adjustments that you can make. Notice how the head of the arm bones are going back. And as they do, the heart is coming forward between your two upper arms. Push the tops of the feet into the ground and release. Now, <laughs> hands by your rib cage. Did you like that mischievous laugh? Okay, you can come up through tabletop just like we did before. Tuck your toes. Or you're coming up through plank through those five counts. Here we go. It's up to you. Five, four. Three, two, one. Beautiful. Down dog. Exhale. Left leg rises. Breathe in. Left foot will step forward and through in between your hands. Step that right foot off to the right just a little so you've got a little wider base between front and back foot. Low lunge twist. Left arm to the sky. Breathe in. Now this left arm is going to thread between the front leg and the front arm, and then it's going to reach over to the left as your back leg bends, heels in, toes out, and your right arm sweeps out to the right. So this is a variation of skandhasana. Good. Inhale. Right hand down, left arm up. 
Exhale, thread it through, reach the right arm out. We have three more. Inhale, open, exhale. Find your breath, last two, breathe in. Exhale. Last time, breathe in. Exhale. This time when your hands come back around, inhale, pop that back heel up, and exhale, push off, step forward, Uttanasana. Maybe going a little deeper in your Uttanasana, you could clasp your hands behind your calves. You could even take the figure eight where the hands wrap behind and then the forearms hold the front of the shins. And again, give yourself permission. You have a choice. You can bend your knees here. Shake out that head. Shake it out. Yes. Shake it out. No. Fingertips draped to the ground. Bend your knees. Let's roll it up. Vertebrae by vertebrae. Head coming up last. Roll the shoulders back and down. Very good, everybody. Take a full breath. Let your eyes close. Turn your palms forward. Exhale. Reach the arms up and wide. Inhale. Open up. Exhale. Swan dive. Inhale. Lengthen. Exhale. Plant your hands. You can step or float. Chaturanga. Up dog. Cobra. Inhale. Exhale. Downward facing dog. Take a full breath. Breathe in. Let it go. Heels rise. Inhale. Bend your knees. Look forward. Think of that crouching down dog before you, if you jump, before you push off. Inhale. Lengthen. Exhale. Fold. Reverse your arms. Breathe in. Hands to heart. Exhale. Again. Inhale. Reach. Exhale. Fold. Get into the rhythm of the breath. Inhale. When we have moments, step or float. We're feeling frustrated. Focusing more on breathing in those moments. Exhale back. I'm trying to release some thinking because the mind will keep perpetuating. Inhale. Finding more evidence. Exhale. Lift your heels. Breathe in. Look to your thumbs. As you exhale, bend the knees and the bottom of the breath, step or float. Lengthen, breathe in. Fold and bow, let it go. Reverse your arms, inhale. Exhale, hands to the heart. Arms release by your sides. Beautiful, take a full breath, breathe in. Let it go. Inhale, Utkatasana, reach your arms up, breathe in. Drinking bird, heels lift, arms airplane back. Chair pose still. Heels gently lower down, breathe in. Exhale, airplane back. Heels lift. Two more, breathe in. Exhale. One more, inhale. Exhale. Now let the heels come down, bring your hands to prayer, breathe in. Twist to the right, left elbow, bring it to the outside of your right leg. Take a deep breath, inhale. Twist a little deeper. Look down at the floor, lift your left heel. Flamingo, draw the left heel up towards the glute. Breathe in, slowly send that left leg back. Now you're in a crescent twist. If it's too much, you can always take the left hand down on the inside of the foot. Some of you want to open the arms to fly. Here you can. Take another deep breath. Letting it go. Good. Now right hand down outside that right leg. Spin the left heel down side angle. And I do know that that front thigh is on fire. I want you to stay with me just for another moment. Breath out. One more. Inhale. Nothing lasts forever. Nothing. Nothing. Reverse your triangle. I need you to drive down into that front leg. Whoo! Left arm down your back leg. Right arm reaching up. Trikonasana. Reach forward. Reach forward. Keep reaching forward. And then right hand down, left arm up. Breath in. Breath out. 
the real work is off the mat, but the work begins on the mat. The work begins the moment we recognize that we have a choice. We stop pointing fingers, whether that's at work or in a relationship. And we say, what can I do? What can I do? Go ahead, inhale, come up, squeezing the legs together. Goddess pose, heels will come in, toes out. Bend your knees. Reach your arms out into a cactus shape. Inhale, right arm on top of left arm. Garudasana arms. If they don't go all the way together, back of the hands is just fine. Lifting the elbows up. And now hinge from the hip crease and fold. Feeling a broadening across that upper back. Good. Unwind the arms, plant them underneath you, push into your hands, and as you do, straighten your legs and spin your heels out. Outer edges of your feet are now parallel with the outer edges of your mat, and go ahead and fold. You can walk your hands back. Prasarita Padottanasana, wide leg straddle. And the yoga practice is truly a beautiful example of the ebb and flow, the challenges, the softness. And also the impermanence, right? You know, just like your yoga pose will change, even if you're in one you don't like, that in your life, can you remember that? If you're in a season where things are really hard, it will change. Now, walk your hands back under your shoulders. This is optional here. Keep your left foot where it is, and I want you to heel toe your right foot so that your right toes are pretty much right behind your right wrist. Already notice that difference. You know, feel a different stretch in the, the right leg so you can stay right here. Or lift that heel and put your knee high up into your right armpit. Lean forward, putting your weight into your fingertips a little more and see if you can pick that right foot up. Left foot still on the ground for five, four, keep breathing, three, two, and set the ball of the foot down, the heel down, straighten that leg. Let's meet back with everyone. One, take a full breath, inhale, walk your hands back around to the front of the mat, exhale. Now you can come out of this any way you like. You can just step back to down dog. You could go to child's pose. If you wanted to stand into that right foot and lift left leg up and take a hop or two and make your way through your vinyasa doing that, you can do that as well, okay? So lots of options. Maybe on that second or third hop, you can shoot it back to Chaturanga. And then up dog, Cobra, breathe in. And we'll all meet again in down dog or child's pose. Breathe out. Take a nice deep breath, inhale. Maybe open your mouth, that was a lot. <laughs> Exhale, sigh it out. Good, all right, left leg. Left leg reaches up towards the sky. Oh, nope, it doesn't. Left leg will come down to the ground. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, lift your heels, breathe in. Psych, remember we used to say that? Bend your knees, look forward, step or hop, top of your mat. Inhale, extend. Exhale, fold. All right, big toes come together, inner heels just a little bit apart, bend your knees, sink your hips, chair pose, utkatasana. Exhale, lift your heels, drinking bird. I was saying the other day, I don't always have people when I record, you know, to lift heels, airplane back if I forget something, but I have started some live classes and it's so nice if I make an oops, two more. Exhale, someone can remind me. Last time, breathe in. Exhale, if you wanna practice live with me, heels down, hands to heart, inhale, we twist left. Put a note in the comments, I'll message you. Hands to prayer, chair twist to the left. Right elbows outside your left leg, breathing in. Twisting deeper, breathing out, draw the right thigh bone back more, be able to wiggle your toes. Now look down, put your weight in that left foot, pick your right heel up. See if you can keep the knees squeezing together and lift that right heel, flamingo. Spread your right toes. 
and then slowly send that right leg back. Crescent twist. Crescent twist. Now, if you want to open your arms to fly, remember that right hand could always come down inside the front leg if you need it to. Breathing in. Breathing out. Sink a little lower in that left leg. Good. Now, left hand down. Spin your back heel down. Side angle. Please stay with me. You got this. Side angle with the right arm just to the sky. Full breath in. I know this is lower than maybe your left hand normally goes. Breathe out. Now drive down into those legs, straightening that front leg, reverse your triangle. Let out a big sigh, inhale. Triangle pose. Now maybe the back foot, you need to bring it in a little bit, but let's reach out and reach out a little more and reach out a little more and then left hand down. Right arm up, Trikonasana. You can look forward, you can look down, you can look up. Take another deep breath. And then squeeze your legs together. Inhale, use the sides of your waist to rise up. Goddess pose, heels in, toes out. Cactus your arms, inhale as you bend your knees and it's left arm on top of right arm. Lifting the elbows up, inhale. Hinging forward, exhale. Soften your breathing. Unwind the arms, hands underneath you. Spin the heels out, straightening the legs, breathe in. This time, if you like, clasp your hands behind your back. Stretch the knuckles up and over. Relax your head. Hands come down. So they're underneath the chest and the arms are straight. Good, now keep the right leg where it is. Now it's left foot will heel toe in so that your left foot is behind your left wrist. And just notice that difference. You play with the weight a little bit of just how you move and shift from side to side, right foot, left foot. You're gonna probably notice some good stretching through that left leg. And you can just stay right there. You can even be on fingertips if you're not gonna come into this little bit of a balance. So some of you left heel will lift. Put your left knee up into that left armpit. And you may find one side works and one side doesn't, and that's okay. See if you can pick that left leg up. Arms stay straight the whole time for four, three, two, ball of the foot down, heel down, and take a moment, one. Walk your hands back around. You have the option to vinyasa any way you like. We'll meet in downward facing dog. The left foot's forward if you wanted to take the hops, one or two or three. Claw the earth with your finger pads and drive up through that lifted leg. Chaturanga, inhale, lift into up dog cobra and it's down dog or child's pose. Nice, take a breath in and a full breath out. Relax your head and neck, inhale. Let it go. Good. Come down onto the knees. Breathe in. Bring your right forearm to the ground. Breathe out. Now take your left fingertips back so they're in line with your right elbow. All right. And then we're going to slowly come up into this kind of funky dolphin shape. Mm -hmm. And take a nice deep breath. Breathe in. And as you exhale, see if you can lift that left leg up and then bring that left knee on the back of the left arm. So a little different than you were just doing, but still using the core muscles. Your head is lifted. And then set that leg back into the funky dolphin and drop the knees. Push into that left hand. Reach your right arm up and thread your right arm underneath. So just when you think, oh my goodness, I can't go right into the next side. Hey, I got you. You don't need to right now, okay? 
Full breath in. In fact, you could have done this even if I didn't give it to you. Breath out. You always have a choice. Push into that left hand. Right hand back underneath you. Okay, now it's left forearm down. Right fingertips are going to come back in line with the right elbow. And remember, you can stop at any point. You might just stay here in tabletop. Those of you that want to, you'll lift up into this funky dolphin pose. The right leg will lift, and as you exhale, the right knee will come forward, and you can bring the weight forward a little so that you're looking kind of to the right of that left forearm as you put your right knee on the back of that right arm. Take another breath. Good, and then set it down, knees down. All right, switching sides. Other arm, actually I think it's right arm threads. Right arm, oh no, it's left arm because I was looking at you for left arm threads. <laughs> so I'm turned away from you now. Right hand down, left arm goes underneath. Left side of your head is down on the ground. Good, and then slowly back up, tabletop. Sit back on those heels, tuck your toes, broken toe pose. All right, how are the arms doing? So first the legs got really fiery and warm in the warm up. Now the arms are like, okay, I've joined, I've joined the party. So we'll play with what I call adolescent crow, all right? Um, we've been working a lot with the core and that straddle, trying to pull the leg up just now in that dolphin shape. So we're just going to give it a whirl. If it doesn't work today, it doesn't work today, and that's okay. Some of you may find this is actually easier than regular crow. So are you ready? Of course you are. All right. So we're going to start with left forearm down. Actually, I'll start the other way so you can see. Let's do right forearm down, left hand, left fingertips in line. All right. Now, Lots of different ways to come into this, and you'll, you can play around with it a little bit. But I'm going to come back just like we just did in Dolphin. But I'm going to keep my weight a little more forward so that my gaze can be right next to, to the left of that right forearm. So I'm going to lift up. Mm -hmm. And the left leg will go on first. And for some of you, it's going to be easier to just put that right knee down. So let's actually all do that. Left, left arm on the back of the left leg, right knee down. It's a lot more advanced to lift that right leg. Now, slowly start to come. Yep. Lift that knee just for a moment. Oh, hang on. <laughs> I'm having a brain fart. Pause. Just pause. Wipe everything clean that I just said. Everything. Do over. Take two. I'm going to have you start on your other arm because it's going to be harder to do it like that. Okay. Now, I could stop this video and be like, I'm going to re-record it. No. This is, this is just life. This is what happens sometimes. Same arm. Here's what I want you to do. Come onto your toes. Come onto your toes. Sometimes I have thoughts in my mind, and then they di execute different when they actually come out. Take your knees wide, just like you would a crow pose. Very good. Right forearm down. We're going to actually do the arm on the back of the, the forearm that's down on the ground. So I want you to squeeze your right knee. So I'm going to turn so you can see for a sec. Squeeze your right knee into your right arm. Uh-huh. Now lean forward. My right knee, it's not really on anything. It's just kind of touching the back of my right arm. Left leg, put it on the back of that tricep. Okay, now here's the fun. You're just going to stay here. Or you're going to see if you can pick the right foot up and bring the toes together. That's it. For three. Maybe inner heels together. Two. And one. How'd that go? Yeah, you're like, thank gosh we didn't have to do it with the left leg started on. Okay. All right, I'm going to show you with the block on the other side so that you could use the block for your forehead just to give you a little bit more of a shift here. So left forearm down, and it's left knee that's kind of wedging up. So remember when we were here and we pulled that knee up, okay, it's just lower to the ground now. So obviously I, we do have to have a lot of flexion that we have in the hip crease. So for some of us, it just may not work today, and that's okay. Right hand, bring it back, slide that block. You may have to adjust the block a little bit. I may have to go higher, so we're just going to play around. So lean forward, left arm, left leg is connected to left arm. Lean forward. Yep. And I'm going to bring my forehead on that block, 
and put my right leg, I've got my forehead on the block and my right foot lifts. I need to scooch that block a little more forward. And then maybe left leg lifts and my forehead is balancing, helping me balance on the block as I bring the inner edges of the feet or at least the big toes together. Good, and then come down. Soles of the feet together. Open up. Now, what I encourage you to do is actually stop this, rewind, and go back and do it again. Because the first time, especially with my little oops, just go back, do it again one more time. Now, adole adolescent crow is kind of like adolescent children, which I have a few. <laughs> it's a little challenging, it's a little tricky, it can make you a little angry and frustrated. And then I remember in the moment as I'm fluttering my wings and I start to breathe <laughs> that I have a choice. Start to fold forward if you like. Maybe forearms down to the ground. Breathe in, breathe out. Let your neck be long, breathe in, breathe out. Once more, inhale, exhale. Now inhale, slowly come up. Keep the left leg bent in, stretch your right leg straight. Take both arms to the sky, inhale, and exhale, fold, reaching your hands towards your right leg. Right forearm, maybe you bring it out to the outside of the right leg and take that left hand to the outside of your right foot. Breathing in. Maybe emptying out. So as we realize we have choices, there'll be moments when those choices turn out and there'll be moments when they don't. And you remember, I'm only human. I'm only human. <laughs> right? We are all human, just like me, making a mistake. Oh, yep, we're going to do it. Now, could I have re-recorded and made it all a little bit more perfect? Sure, but that's not real, folks. We make mistakes. And we forget and we remember and we try again and we start over and we learn something every single time if we are open to the lesson. Go ahead, inhale, come up. Now take that straight right leg. You might be a little bit kind of turned on your mat in a funky direction. That's okay. Right leg crosses over, right hand behind you, left arm to the sky, breathe in. Exhale, let's twist, left arm to the outside of your right leg. Sitting nice and tall, breathe in. Now if this bothers your bottom leg to have it bent, you can always straighten it here. And if you want to add in a bind, maybe sweeping the right arm behind the back or even left arm threading between and catching your hand, you can. But notice, notice if your back rounds a lot. If that's happening for you, then I want you to come back to the half shape, okay, the half bind. One more breath. And then slowly unwind, come back around. Now sweep this top leg back, and we're gonna do a twist the other way. Now right hand to the left and left hand behind you. You can let the right sit bone be lifting up and inhale. Turn and twist. Turn and twist. Just a nice open twist here because we did a lot of movement where we were kind of coiling in. So just giving space for the belly as you unwind. Good. And bring the legs back around. Baddha Konasana. Flutter your wings. Let yourself fold forward. And then inhale, come up. And now we'll switch sides. Left leg will be straight, right leg will stay bent in. You can bring that foot in a little more. Reaching your arms to the sky, inhale. Exhale, folding forward, both hands towards your left foot. Option to bring the left forearm to the ground and taking your right hand to the outside of the left foot. 
Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, emptying out. On your next in-breath, inhale, rise, come all the way up. And then bring that left leg across your body. Seated twist. Left hand behind you, inhale, right arm up. Right arm to the outside of the left leg. Breathing in, nice and tall. Exhale. Now, a lot about a seated twist has to do with the placement of the back hand. If I have the left hand too far to the left, it'll feel like I get stuck. And if you take the left hand behind you more, notice how that opens it up. So those of you taking the bind, right, that arm does eventually go back and around to clasp. This is my tighter side in my shoulder and in my hip. So some, some days I'll you know, sort of have the clasp and some days we don't. I don't. <laughs> Last breath. Good. Unwind. And now take this top leg, bring it back behind you so that the sole of your right foot is on the inner thigh and this left leg's kind of back in a hero. We're twisting the other way. Right hand behind you, left hand comes across to right knee, spine tall again. You can let this left sit bone lift as you turn and open the torso and really think about cobra, up dog, really opening up the chest the back inner thigh spiraling towards the floor. Good, unwind, come back around, bring that left leg around now, either sitting in a Sukhasana or if you like into a double pigeon, okay? Your choice, double pigeon, left shin is on top of right shin. You can always use your block or a blanket if you had it to support that knee. And if you're more open here and the knee is down, you can put the block in front of you. If you're really open in those hips, make sure your bottom shin is pushing forward. It's parallel to the front edge of your sticky mat or the long edge if you're facing like I am. And then scooch this shin forward. Flex your top foot so the heel is more in line with the ball of the foot. And then push into your hands. And the back will tend to round here. Push into the hands and see if you can spin. Can you see it? Spin the inner thighs back behind you and then reset the pelvis down. Beautiful. And you may stay upright. This You're feeling plenty. Remember, you have permission. You have a choice to be in Sukhasana, left shin in front. And those of you that have room to fold and you want to fold, come on down. And let's take five deep breaths here, breathing in. And if we slow those breaths down, it's about a minute, okay? Nice and deep. About a six count inhale, roughly five to six. Six count exhale. When you finish your sixth breath, or fifth breath, excuse me, inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, lean back. Stretch those legs out. Give them a little shake. Take a nice deep breath, breathe in. And exhale, I'm keeping my feet a little wider here. It's not a wide leg straddle, but it's not a Paschimottanasana where the feet are together. Just letting myself fold here in a little bit more of a relaxed space to unwind from that big hip opener. And then inhale, come up and we'll switch sides. So left leg will be our bottom leg and right leg now will cross over. Take your time, feet, top foot's flexed, bottom foot is flexed, chest up tall. Maybe hands come beside you, push into those hands and try to send the groins back behind you. So it's the tip of the pelvis, getting a little bit more of that forward tilt. 
I also like to squeeze with my right arm against my right outer leg and my left forearm against the sole of my foot and I kind of squeeze in and that'll help create a little more sensation in those hips too, but also a little bit more release. Continue to lengthen the sternum out of the pelvis a little bit more. And you're taking these long, slow breaths of about six counts in and six counts out five times. We get to practice being in something intense and yet not rushing. And when you finish that fifth breath for you, you can scooch that block off to the side. Come on up. Good. This time we'll stretch again the legs straight. Give them a little shake. Reaching the arms up. If you need to, pull the flesh out for a moment underneath those sit bones. Reaching the arms up. And exhale, holding the feet. Now again, you can have the feet a little wider. You could bend your knees and let your forearms wrap underneath. And if you even want a little more grounding, you could grab that block and put it under your forehead. And then inhale, slowly come up. Keep holding on that block so it's near you as you come all the way down onto your back. Take your feet as wide as your mat. Cactus your arms and allow your legs to windshield wiper side to side. Next time the legs end over to the right, let's keep them there. Stretching out that left thigh. If you wanted to hook your right ankle above your left knee, you can. If you want a little deeper, stretch your left arm up and over your head. So the arm is straight. Unhook that leg if it's hooked, the foot. Bend that left arm back into a cactus if it's straight, and let's come back up. Couple windshield wipers again, side to side. Releasing that low back. And the next time your legs end to the left, let's stay there. Left ankle has the option to hook above your right knee. Now draw your tailbone towards the back of that right knee while also keeping the right shoulder down. You can take your right arm instead of cactus, take the bend out of the elbow and straighten it so it's reaching over your head. Bending that arm back in, unhooking that left knee. Inhale, coming back up. And last time we're windshielding back and forth. Good, and we'll end in a supported bridge, so please grab your block, feet hip width apart. Lift your hips up, slide any height that feels right in your body, and you'll have the option here if you want to to stretch your legs straight on your block just to let those hip flexors really open up after having a lot of flexion in some of the different movements we did today, if that feels good. So for some of you, the lowest level on the block will probably feel better, but Whatever is good for you, you can let those legs relax. But if you do get any kind of compression or pinching in your low back, please just take it out. You can even do a rolled uh, blanket instead of a block. Or just stay in the bridge, stay in a nice supported bridge. If you're in the bridge, feet are hip width apart, parallel to each other. Focusing on slowing the breathing down. We do do a lot of work on our mat. We do. And it's a beautiful and it's a safe practice for us to recognize 
the constant change of our lives, how emotions do come and go. And instead of trying to hold them and continuously narrating more validation so we keep feeling crummy, to recognize in those moments on the mat, off the mat, that we do have a choice. Bend your knees, draw one foot back to the floor, slide the other sole of the foot back to the floor and take a full breath where you're in bridge. Breathing in, if you wanna take your arms over your head. Breathing out. And then slowly bring your arms back by your sides, push down into your feet, slide that block out as you lift the hips from underneath you and soles of the feet together. Now you're gonna interlace your three middle fingers so that the fingers are facing the inside and then bring your thumbs and your pinkies together and the fingers are open and the palms are going to just rest over the navel center with the pinkies pointing down towards the pubic bone and the thumbs pointing up towards your heart. It's a really nice grounding mudra. taking responsibility for ourselves and where we are in our life and even in the relationships. Whether we're happy or we're not in the best space. Just taking a moment to say, I own where I am right now. I own this. And also reminding yourself that there is nothing that you cannot figure out. and believing that into our core, that there is nothing that you cannot figure out. When you believe that, when you recognize that you have a choice, it's as though we just change the filter, the lens of how we perceive the world. You can stay here or you can let your legs begin to extend out, back of the hands facing down, palms facing up. Shavasana. Allow your ujjayi breath to dissolve. And if it's helpful to bring in a mantra to keep you more grounded and focused as you inhale chanting to yourself in your mind the mantra so hum so as you inhale hum as you exhale which means I am so hum Try and allow the breath to levitate on its own as you breathe in and to empty out and release with less effort as you exhale. The mantra following the breath, so hum.
gently begin to come back, bringing movement to your fingers and to your toes. Stretch your arms up and over your head. Take a big full body stretch. Bend your knees. Let's roll to the right side. Use your hands to bring your body back upright to an easy seat, holding your hands together in front of your heart. The most profound personal growth does not happen always while we're reading a book or meditating on our mat. It happens in those throes of conflict when we are feeling angry or frustrated or overwhelmed or afraid. And it happens when doing the same old thing and suddenly we realize that we have a choice. So as you draw thumbs to third eye, may we leave our mats today seeing with new eyes and remembering this deeper truth in our heart that we do have a choice. That all things come and go. But that what is true within you is that you have everything you need to figure anything out. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you, friends. If you enjoyed this practice, please share it and like it and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear what resonated with you, even if it was just one person to another remembering our own humanity and that we all make mistakes. So thank you. Until next time, have an amazing day.